It happens every time someone sends out threat letters or another white powder hoax, and my phone starts to ring. People become concerned about their mail. This kind of stuff gets the headlines. But the real threats are things like identity theft or dumpster divers. Either way, we try to help. Mr. Hopal. Inspector Goddard. Appreciate it. Nice. Nice. We certainly appreciate you guys coming out. I thought we could talk for just a minute, and then we'll take a tour of the mail center. That's fine. How many employees do you have, Mr. Hopal? Well, at this location, counting the front office, 2,100. We receive mail from about two-thirds that number. Most of our products go out by truck, but we are responsible for about 1,000 pieces of mail a day. You mentioned on the phone that you had some concerns. Well, yeah, like everybody else, we're concerned about terrorism, things being sent through the mail. We understand your concerns, but your company isn't likely to be a target. Oh, really? In fact, threats in the mail are very rare. It's like one in billions. <laughs> Many organizations are concerned about being the target of extremists. That's even more rare. You know, the very few cases of truly dangerous threats that we see, Nearly all of them are very personal. They're intended for one specific target. Well, you know, we've never prompted any protests here at this company, but we have had some employees' personal problems that have caused us concern. That's why it's still important to have a plan for dealing with suspicious mail and packages. Like, you probably have a plan for dealing with workplace violence. Sure. And even hoaxes or false alarms can really, really disrupt an operation. I brought along some posters. This is our suspicious mail poster. It can really help your employees learn the obvious things to look for. Mm -hmm. Excessive postage. Stains all over this, too much tape. Mm -hmm. Mail like this would stand out like a sore thumb here. And you want your employees to be alert to these type of signs, but sometimes dangerous packages don't look all that different from regular mail. So it's important for you to have a plan that takes an all-hazards approach. Okay, well, what do you suggest? Well, it's, it's fairly straightforward. If one of your employees receives a package they weren't expecting or, you know, looks a little unusual, mm -hmm. just make sure they attempt to verify the package with the sender before they open it. Usually a phone call, clear things right up. Sounds reasonable. Stephen Ridge, this is Dan Anderson at Bradley McMinn. I got a package here for Tom Farnsworth. He used to be a VP of ours, but uh, he hadn't worked here in quite a while. Did you send it? I see. Product samples. Also, keep in mind that threats can come from a number of different sources. Express delivery services, couriers, even things that are just left behind by visitors. Now, your plan should address all the ways that correspondents can enter the building. But the actual threat of receiving anything dangerous is very low. There are some other areas around here that should concern you a lot more. Like what, Inspector? Opportunistic theft. Dumpster divers. Identity scams. And these things happen a lot more than you might think. Well, I have some experience in that area. Unfortunately, last year we had an employee caught going through some packages. So what can we do to prevent those sorts of problems from happening in the future? That's a good start. We mentioned opportunistic theft. Uh -huh. That can be things like employees pilfering small items like cash, gift cards, books, DVDs. Well, our employees don't typically handle much cash. It's a really good policy. Think about it. Someone's sorting the mail and they see a birthday card that's been mailed from out of state. There's a really good chance there's going to be something of value in there, maybe a gift card. It'd be really tempting, especially for a new worker or temporary employee. You know, that's exactly what happened last Christmas. What can we do to stop that from happening again? You can ask employees not to receive personal mail at work. You can install security cameras. Employees are less likely to be tempted that way. OK. Yeah. Hey, hold up a second. Let's just go. 
Hey, don't allow any mail or materials to be taken out the back door. It just makes it too easy to smuggle things out to a car or to an accomplice. Okay. And be very careful of schemes involving trash containers. Yeah, don't ever allow mail or boxes to be discarded directly into the trash. Uh, we arrested a guy last year. He was just throwing valuables into the trash, and he was simply collecting them from the dumpster after hours. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You also want to keep your purchasing and your mail center functions separate. You don't yeah. want your employees to be able to order merchandise and then intercept it when it comes into the building. Well, that's not really a problem here because any purchase over $10 requires a PO and that has to be signed by a supervisor. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, see your posters meter? Mm -hmm. We suggest you treat that like an ATM. Why? I mean, who wants to steal postage? Oh, you'd be surprised. We caught a middle-level manager last year using his company's postage meter to promote a new small business he was trying to launch. It may not sound like much, but he was sending out hundreds of brochures and materials every week. Mounted to over $10,000 before anyone got wind of it. Well, even if we installed cameras in here, we couldn't stop that. I mean, our employees meet her hundreds of pieces of mail every day, and frankly, there's nothing suspicious about it. Well, there's an easy fix for that. Just compare your outgoing mail volume with your postage expenses every month or so. And once you know the average for both, any large variation will really stand out. Okay. Well, that's pretty much the tour. You guys want to go back to my office? Yeah, sure. You're not mailing out wine, are you? Oh, no. Someone just used that for repackaging. Reusing boxes is fine, but markings for non-mailable items that got to be removed are completely marked out. And no mailing of alcohol, beer, wine, liquor. It's illegal and potentially dangerous. Okay. Colby, could you do me a favor and plaster over the markings on that wine box? Sure. Thanks. Well, we've gone through all the aspects of our security survey. And overall, we think you're in good shape. Physical security of your building is excellent. And our only suggestions are operational or involve reducing opportunities for crime. Well, um, that's nice to hear, but what about the areas where we need improvement? Have you given much thought to identity theft? Actually, we have. Um, you mentioned dumpster diving earlier. We have a policy here that all discarded mail go to the shredder before it goes to the trash. And after your suggestion about the packaging, I'm going to implement a policy that all boxes be broken down as well. Good. That's really good. We did notice that your, your employees have access to the personnel database. Yes, they do. Is that a problem? Well, it could be. It could be an opening for ID theft. You, just, you might want to consider limiting the number of employees that have access. And it'd be a really good idea if you separate personal information, like home addresses, social security numbers from the company directory. I don't believe there's any personal data in that database, but I will check with HR just to make sure. Have you thought about illegal drugs being shipped through here? Through the mail? Yeah, it happens. We've arrested people who've had illegal drugs shipped to their office or mail center, sent it to their homes. They think they're less likely to get caught that way. Remember that case Nichols worked in Chicago last year? The kid was working in a mail room at a college there. And he decided to create a fictional student, gave him his own mailbox and everything. His source was shipping steroids down from Canada to this non existent student. So whenever the mailroom clerk saw a name on a package, he just slipped it out to his car. How did you guys catch him? The supervisor got a little suspicious when he saw three packages from Canada all in the same week. He started looking into it, saw that rent had never been paid on the box, and lo and behold, this student had never been registered at this school. So after he called us, it didn't take that long to figure the whole thing out. So. Well, let me ask you, what should I be looking for in my setting? Packages from source states. Arizona, California, Florida, Texas. In Canada, as a source for steroids and, and even date rape drugs, we're seeing a lot of those in liquid form. Well, you know what? We get packages from all those places all the time. How would I know what to look for here? Well, he's being alert to things out of the ordinary. I mean, chances are you get packages from the same suppliers over and over, and they're going to the same people inside your company, right? Okay. So if I have an employee who suddenly starts getting packages from one of these states, that's something I should probably look into. Exactly, exactly. Just, just stay alert. And by showing a strong interest in security, like you're doing, you're going to make people think twice before trying anything. Also, be a really good idea to do background checks on mail center employees. Okay, I'll make a note of that as well. You mentioned your outgoing mail mm -hmm. volume earlier. What kind of things do you mail? Well, basically, it's just um, routine correspondence, a few packages, and once a quarter, we do send out a uh, mass mailing. Really? Tell us, tell us a little more about that. Well, we... Um, send out product samples to potential customers and we use mailing lists a couple hundred thousand pieces at a time but we only do that kind of volume like once a quarter 
These type of mailings are a concern. And we've had people mail out samples of their products, like sports drink powder mixes, other liquids and powders. If they're not properly packaged, they can leak out and cause customers or mail handlers right. to be concerned there's a hazard. Well, we do send out some small powder samples. Are there any guidelines for packaging? Oh yeah, proper packaging is a, it's a big concern. You need to label your samples clearly on the outside. This way, if there is a spill, they can be easily identified. And many mailers are even putting their company websites or telephone numbers on the outside of the mail pieces. It just makes it easier to contact you if there's a question. Ah, yeah, great. It looks perfect. You might also want to notify the Postal Service before doing a mass mailing that raises any concerns. That way we've got you in our system and can quickly clear up any problems. Okay, I'll make a note of that. What else? Talk to your marketing department, company's ad agency. <laughs> you wouldn't believe some of the clever marketing ideas we've seen. My favorite is an ad agency in Cleveland who sent out fake hand grenades. <laughs> Their slogan was, this sales the bomb or something. Well, I'm sure somebody thought that was a clever idea, but they obviously didn't think about the people who'd be opening those packages. Yeah, I notice your company requires ID badges. That's, that's a great idea. What do you do about vendors? Well, our vendors have ID badges that we control, and any visitors have to sign in at the front desk, and then they're escorted around the building by an employee. Mm -hmm. We think you're on the right track, Mr. Hopewell. I'm going to talk to our management group about the cameras. We have a fairly high turnover rate. Most of our top executives started in the mailroom, but we do also have a lot of young people, and it's just better to be safe than sorry. You know, think about those background checks, and remember to limit access to that loading dock. Well, I'll take care of that this afternoon. I, I never realized how easy it would be to pill for mail that way. Yeah, okay. Glad we can help. Right. Give us a call if you have any questions or are just concerned about something. I really appreciate you coming out. You've been a great help. I'll escort you out. You can get more information on Mail Center Security on our website, www.usps.com slash postal inspectors. Look for our suspicious mail poster, which is free to download. It is also included on this DVD and can be accessed on most computers. We get a lot of questions about suspicious or dangerous mail, but the odds of that affecting your company are remote. The real security concerns are much more mundane. Now remember these simple steps to make your mail center more secure. Number one. Make sure that you have a plan for dealing with suspicious packages. Before opening any package that seems suspect, verify the contents with the sender. Number two, limit access to your mail center and pay attention to the physical security of your building. Don't allow mail to be discarded without shredding and be sure to break down all boxes before they're disposed of. Number three, consider background checks for mail center employees and install cameras to discourage theft. And lastly, Make security a priority in your mail center. By displaying a strong interest in protecting your company's mail, you'll discourage crimes from happening. By taking these simple steps we discussed today, you can reduce losses, increase security, and avoid liability to your organization. Now remember, security is everyone's concern. <laughs>